Life would be so sweet if all we had to do was buy product and sell it. But unfortunately, we do have to pay for it eventually. That's just the reality of it all. Now, whether you're a small business or a large business, we all have bills to pay. It could be that you actually purchase inventory and product and need to pay your vendors for that. It could also be that you have overhead, things like utility bills, cell phones, even printing or reproduction costs. All of these things will have some type of bills that eventually need to be paid. In this chapter, we'll talk about how to enter all kinds of different bills that you can have, how to select bills for payment, as well as how to print the checks. If you are building your file along with me as I work through this course, you can simply keep that same company file open as we work. If you're just joining in, if you didn't follow all of the steps from the previous chapters, or if you simply want to start each chapter with a fresh file, you need to use a company file from the Project Files folder located on your desktop. The Project Files are actually backup files for my working file. They simply need to be restored in order for you to be able to use them. Go to the File menu, choose Restore, and work through the wizard to choose the backup from the file folder that you're going to be choosing from the desktop. There are four ways to pay bills, and that's both a peach tree rule as well as just a general life rule. The first would be to pay from a purchase order that you've already received. Now we've already done that in a prior chapter, so we're not going to revisit that one. But we are going to look at a couple of other options. The second way to pay a bill is to enter a bill that needs to be paid, but you're not going to pay on it now. The third way is to enter a bill that was paid at the time, or partially paid at the time you received it. And the fourth is to make a cash purchase without ever receiving a bill. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these other options that we have. We'll do this as part of our regular tasks. That means we're going to go to the task menu, come down to the bills option, and there's two different categories in the flyout. One is to enter the bills and one is to pay the bills. We're in the first step. That is now so a let's very familiar window some bills. where we can begin to fill this out. As a matter of fact, if you look at it very as carefully, you'd expect, you'll notice that it's very similar to what we worked with with our purchase order. We're going to have a vendor, we're going to have a remit to and a ship to, and on the right hand side it's going to want to know if we have an invoice number or if we're waiting on a bill. So again, this should be very familiar to you. I'm going to go ahead though and create a new vendor that doesn't exist. I have a cell phone and I'm going to get the bill and I'm going to pay that bill later, maybe at the end of the month. So I'm going to type in the vendor ID and go ahead and kind of add them in on the fly. The name of the company is Ringtone Cellular. We'll just abbreviate that as ringtone, press tab, and then we'll go ahead and fill out the full name in the remit too. Remember that filling in all of this information is usually important because it will be printed on the check. Then you could simply pop it into a window envelope and you're ready to go. Just because we don't need a typing lesson here, I'm not going to take the time to fill in all of the addresses, city, state, and so forth. You know how to do the typing. I am going to move over though to the right hand side and go ahead and enter my invoice number. The invoice number was 76423. Obviously I don't want to wait on the bill, I'm actually entering the bill. So now I can move down to the other information, which we're again vaguely familiar with. We can put in the customer invoice, the terms, shipping, those types of things. Now our default shipping in this particular file is FedEx next day. I don't think I'm going to be FedExing my bills. It's a very expensive way to do it, at least not if I pay them on time. So what I might do is either create an entry that says none, so if there's ever a time when I'm not working with shipping, that's an option, or I could also use just U.S. mail as an entry. That's just a little side note to help you kind of complete this list and keep it up to date, as well as remember that it's not just for customers, but also for how you pay your own bills. We also see that we have an accounts payable account. I'll go ahead and click on this. It's currently set to 20000 and we can see that that is very simply accounts payable. Since we're not writing the check right here at the moment, this is something that is due but has not been paid yet. I'll go ahead and press Escape to get out of that menu, and now we can move down to the details. As with the purchase orders, we normally have the first tab that's available, but this isn't a purchase order, so we're going to apply it to purchases using the second tab. Now it might seem a little odd, but your bill may be detailed. For example, if I was buying office supplies, I could put in that about 15 of something. So even though this is a cell phone bill, some of the fields still tab, apply. And this is normally where I in would this choose case, a product enter that, that I have ordering. one, but I'm not ordering a product. So I'm going to leave this blank and just press tab one more time. Because this is a bill, I want to put in a fairly accurate description. Instead of just cell phone, maybe I'll put in something like August cell phone bill. 
That way, when I see it in registers and reports, I'll be able to more easily identify which month this is for. Then I'll press tab again, and we get to talk about which account it's supposed to come from. You are very familiar with accounts at this point, and I'm going to go ahead and just type in the account number because I know it. I'll type in 79,000. We can see that comes up as telephone expenses, which sounds just about right. And the last thing I have to do is put in my unit price. The total bill is $129.32. Then of course when I press tab, Peachtree does the math and we can see the total amount. If this was an expense that was billable to a customer, we of course could add that job as the very last column. Now you'll see at the bottom that we have the options again that we've seen before where we can talk about other payments and credits that we may have, amount paid on the purchase, and all those other types of calculations. We haven't done it. We're just entering a bill. So I'm done with this one. I'll move to the upper left, click on Save. It of course tells me that ringtone does not exist, so we'll go ahead and do a quick setup. And again, to save us some time, I'm simply going to put in the name and leave everything else blank. Please remember that when you normally do this, you do want to take time to categorize your vendors, make sure you have your 1099s if applicable, and most importantly, put in your expense accounts so you don't have to enter those things over and over again. We're keeping this part simple, though, because we don't need to repeat what you already know. So I'll go ahead and save this one. And fortunately, Peachtree has to keep me honest. It says a valid account must be selected before continuing. I'll say OK, and fortunately, it puts my cursor right where I need it. It's telling me that this is not optional, and if I would have looked at this closer, I should have recognized any time we see the asterisk, that's a required field. So let's go ahead and put this one in. If you remember, our account number that we were working with was 79,000. That then will become our default. We'll move off. Now we'll do a save and a close, which brings us back to where we were originally, which was entering the bill. We'll save this one again. But instead of closing, I'm actually going to click the New button because I have another bill I want to enter. The second type of bill that we can get is a bill that was actually paid at the time we received it. So I went out and I was buying some office supplies the other day from Papers R Us, and I need to go ahead and mark that I have that bill, but I also already paid it. We'll go through the same process. We know that we'll have to add this in, but that's okay. I'll go ahead and do the remit to as well. And we can again step through this pretty quickly. If I didn't have an invoice number, I can leave that blank. Another thing that you might have if you paid for it at the time would be a cash receipt. Those tend to be very long numbers. So when I look at my receipt, I can find that one. And I'm also going to put that I made this purchase yesterday, which was the 27th. Now we can come down and start working with our items. I bought five reams of paper. It doesn't have an item in inventory, so I'll skip over that. And I'll put in reams of copy paper. Sometimes if you want to be detailed, you could put in that it was 20 pound or 96 bright or an actual name, but this is usually good enough for me. The reason I put reams in there is because I have a quantity, but people need to know, was that sheets, cases, pallets? In this case, it was reams. Now we have to figure out which account this should go to. We'll go ahead and use the magnifying glass. And we'll scroll down for our general expenses. And generally, most companies are going to have generic office supplies. We'll give that one a click. We'll go ahead and put in our unit price, which was $3.48 per ream. And this time, we are going to look at the fields at the bottom. We don't have any credits that we're going to use, but we did actually make a payment at the time of purchase. We can see that our total was $17.40, and that was the amount we paid. If I enter an amount and the amount paid at purchase and then press Tab, you'll see that we automatically get two extra fields, a reference and a cash account. If I'm telling Peachtree that I did make a payment, then I need to somehow reference that payment. 
In this case, I could use a check number. I use check number 27345. And I also need to tell Peachtree where the money came from. You notice that this comes up at 10200 and that happens to be my regular checking account, which is just perfect. I just wanted to make sure that that was the right account, so I'll press Escape, keep that as my entry, and now I'll move up and save this transaction. As you well know, as soon as I click on Save, I'm going to be prompted to save the vendor, which is okay. Like I did before, I'll just go ahead and put in a name and call this one good. But also, like I learned last time, I do have to put in an expense account. We know that we have our office supplies near the bottom of the list, so instead of using the arrow, I think I'll grab the scroll box or the elevator box, drag that down, which can get me through a long list a little bit faster, until I get down to the O's for office expenses, office supply expenses, give that a click, and then we'll go ahead and do a save. Close out of this. And I just want to remind you that we actually created a bill that we also paid for in full at the time. But we could have paid just a portion of it. For example, maybe I went and picked something up at a supplier and they require a 50% deposit to cover their costs, and then they're willing to give us net 30 on the other 50%. We would do it the same way. We simply wouldn't pay the full amount in the amount paid at purchase. The reason I say that is because I have one more type of bill to show you. Let's go ahead and save and close.